Ah, Industry 4.0, Industrial Internet of Things, Smart Buildings, Energy Automation, Mobile Machine Automation. You can already start creating projects in all these fields today and earn very good money as an industrial programmer. You only need one tool for programming, configuring and communicating with automation devices. The tool you need is CodeSys. For many years, our company has been using this tool to create amazing automation projects such as pumping stations and even automation for luxury yachts. We chose this tool because it is modern and comes with integrated features like object-oriented programming, visualization creation and an open source library database. You are in the right place because today I'm giving you a two-hour YouTube tutorial on the basics of programming in CodeSys. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and check out our website at contrabyte.tech for more content on automation and robotics. Let's get started. In this video, I will show you how to install CodeSys on your Windows computer. This software is free and provides a Programmable Logic Controllers Simulator, PLC, which is great for learning programming. Let's proceed with the software installation. Firstly, what you need to do is register in the Codesys store. The link to the store you will find down below the video. Click the link and go to Sign In option. Here, click Create Individual Customer Account. Here you need to create a new account for you. So you need to fill a form. You need to type here your first name, last name and some more information marked with red star. You need to add your phone number, street, city, postal code and country. The most important information is your email and establish a password here. What's more, you need to check those boxes with terms and privacy policy, then retype CAPTCHA and click create individual customer account. Once you do that, go back to sign in form, type here your email address and your password. Next, click on sign in button. Great, you have signed in to the Codesys store, now you can Download Codesys Development System version 3. Firstly, click on Details and here you have a description of the software. You can notice here that Codesys is free to use. We have more information here about languages, editors and many more. Okay, so click on Download 64-bit version. Here you have license agreement, read it and in the bottom click on accept button. Now you can download Codesys exe file. Click save and wait for the file to download. Okay, I have Codesys exe file here. Double left mouse click on the file and start the installation wizard. Accept the terms in the license agreement. Click next. Click I have read the information. Click next. Here you can choose the folder. I recommend you to leave that default location. Click next. Here just check complete and click next and click install. It will take several minutes so you need to be patient and install codices on your Windows computer. You have successfully installed codices. All you need to do now is click finish. Go to Windows Start Many, go to codices folder and find your version of codices. Click on codices and start the environment. Perfect. Now you can create a new project and start PLC programming. See you later in the next video.
Before you get started with um, PLC programming, I would like to say a few words about Codus' development system. This software is used for programming automation devices and PLCs. It supports languages like graphical languages, ladder, FBD, or text-based languages like structure text. You can create a beautiful web visualization with ready-made elements. What's more, you can create a communication with protocols like Modbus or Ethergat. You can create your program with object-oriented programming. If you use TIA portal from Siemens, you don't have that option. That's why Codasys is really powerful software for development automation systems. I have a really good information for you. Codasys is free to use for everyone in demo uh, version. No time limit, you can download software and start programming in PLC simulator on your PC. This is a modern tool for every programmer. It supports Python scripts. You can run those scripts and automate your work at the GUI level. Do you have to use a physical PLC to learn programming? No, you can use only codices and PLC simulation. How to use PLC simulator in codices? It is free in demo mode. You can create a virtual PLC on your PC or laptop and you can create a real-time system with option to communicate in Modbus, Ethercad, and even industrial Internet of Things protocols like OPC UA or MQTT. But you need to remember that you can test your program in demo mode only during two hours period. After that, your virtual PLC stops and you need to start it again. Okay, but if you want to be a professional, you will program physical hardware in the future. Over 500 manufacturers produce over 1000 control devices and PLCs that are compatible with codices. Here we have different uh, devices with codices. We have Wago, Delta, Beckhoff, Festo, Viantec, Eton. And you can find many more manufacturers that produce codices compatible devices. Your task is to choose a programming language and start programming. Which programming languages you can use in codices? You can find their graphical languages like ladder, which is similar to electrical diagram in structure. You have graphical language like FBD, function block diagram. Next you have CFC, continuous function chart, which is really popular for building automation. And next you have structured text, which is text-based language. Okay, let's say a few words about structured text programming language. If you know uh, such languages like C, Pascal or Python, you will be familiar with this form of programming. Because you can find here high-level constructs like if case for control program flow and you can find loops like for, while or repeat. This language is really good for implementing mathematical calculations, operations on tables and many more. You can easily implement advanced algorithms for PLC and automation. In Codesys you can use a powerful tool which is debugger. It helps you finding errors in your structured text code. And remember, you don't need to use only structured text. Sometimes you need to use graphical languages for your project. Structured text easily integrates with other graphical languages. Okay, that's all and see you later in the next video. All right, your code is ready to go. You already know what it's for and where you can use it. Now it's time for some basic exercises. I'll show you how to write your first program and create a simple web visualization that you can display in any browser. Hi, in this video I would like to show you how to create a new project in Codesys 
and how to write a simple program in structure text language for PLC. First, open Codices and on the start page just click on new project. Here choose standard project and type a name for the project, project 1. Next click OK. Here choose a device, Codices Control Win, V3X64. Here you can choose a language for main program PLC PRD. You can choose graphical language like Ladder or FBD, but in this video we will work with structured text. And next click OK. OK, the project tree has been created. Double left mouse click on PLC PRD. And here you can zoom in the window for declaring variables and the window for writing PLC program. This is your first project in Codices. That's why you need to configure project. So go to tools, next to options and find here smart coding option and check in option enable for ST editor. Thanks to that you can declare unknown variables automatically. Next click OK. We'll write the simple program with lamp and two push buttons. Let's declare lamp variable. First I will type prefix for that. So I will type X. It means um, our lamp is boolean variable and I will type the name. The first letter should be capital letter, the name of the variable, X lamp. Next you need to type assignment operator and on the right let's declare next variable which will be X PB push button one. I will use and logic guide to create a logic in our program and here let's declare another variable x pb button 2 every single line of code in structure text should be ended with semicolon and you can also add here a comment double slash turn on the lamp if two buttons are pushed. Look at that, we haven't declared our variables for the program yet. That's why click in the end of our line and hit enter on the keyboard. Okay, here we have auto declare um, window for declaring variables. First, we'll declare xlamp variable which is boolean type. That's why we need to choose a bool type in this window and we can click OK. Next, let's declare variable for first button and for the second button. Don't worry if you don't understand everything. I would like to show you the very simple structure text program. Next in the course we will dive deep into variables and more details. Okay, your program is ready to test. So let's go to online and check the simulation option. Go to online and click login and click yes. So you will download a compiled program to the PLC simulator. Right now your simulation is in, in the stop mode. Let's go here and click on start icon. Now you are in a run mode so you can test your program. How does your program work? We would like to set on the lamp. We can do that by pushing two buttons. You can 
simulate it easily. Just double left mouse click on the first button. And look at that, you have prepared a value to write to this variable. Let's go to debug and choose write values. And right now you change uh, the value for the first button to true. So it simulates that the button is pushed. We need to fulfill the condition. We need to push two buttons if you want to turn on the lamp. So let's change the value in the second button. Let's go to debug and click on the right values once again. Congratulations, you have turned the lamp on. The value in the lamp variable turned from false to true. That means that the lamp is turned on. Great, this is your first structure text program. If you had trouble writing this program, I'm leaving a ready to test program below this video. Of course, I also offer help on our Discord channel. See you later in the next video. In this video, I will show you how to create a first visualization in codices. You can use the previous program from our course, or you can download a project template down below the video. Open the project and follow me step by step. Let's look what we have here. We have the first structured text code line here, and here we have the view of variables declaration. On the left, you have a project tree. Go to applications, right mouse click, go to add object, and firstly, add visualization manager. You can check Visu symbols system here and click on add button. Okay, you are in visualization manager. You have some options here. Firstly, you can choose your own style of visualization. I will choose basic style and we can start creating the first screen. So let's go once again to the project tree, right mouse click on application, go to add object and choose visualization. You can add a name for this screen, screen underline zero one and click on add. Great, you have a view of our screen. Then let's go to visualization and choose lamp and switches. Drag and drop deep switch first. Go back to visualization toolbox. Let's choose push switch and drag and drop here. Go back to visualization toolbox and drag and drop the lamp. Great. You can zoom in our view. And what you need to do is to choose a variable and connect this variable to the element. So let's choose the first button, go to properties here, go to variable, double left mouse click and choose three dots here. Go to application, unfold it, go to PLC PRG and let's choose X PB button one. Great, right now you need to hit enter on the keyboard to connect this variable. Okay, let's go to the next button, go to variable field. Let's choose three dots and connect X PB button two. Hit enter on the keyboard and right now you can connect and the variable to the lamp. Let's do the same. And let's choose X lamp. Hit enter. Great. Right now we can test our program. We can close visualization manager 
and here we have two screens for, for PLC PRG and screen number one and we can go to window and we can choose new horizontal tab group great right now we can just go to online and download a program to simulation remember to check simulation option click on login click on yes and start the program okay so let's switch on the first button the value in a variable xp button one has changed to true if you want to turn the lamp on we need to push next button so let's do that success you have turned the lamp on using simple elements for our visualization you can find also the ready made project down below the video and see you later in the next video if you want to become a good automation programmer you need to have the basics variables that's the topic we'll focus on you'll use variables of different types to build your automation application let's go in this video we'll talk about variables the first issue that you need to know when operating on variables are the basic units of memory in codices. The smallest unit memory is a bit on which we can store a logical one or a logical zero. In other words, the value of true or false. The next unit of memory is a byte which consists of eight bits. On each bit, we can write data. Next unit is word, which consists of two bytes. Word consists of 16 bits. The largest unit of memory on which we can operate in codices is double word. It consists of two words. That means it consists of 32 bits. Memory in codices is organized into words, typically 16 bits each word. We can also group two words into double words. Double word is dedicated for large data types. So you can look at this table and this is a word oriented addressing in codices. Useful tip for you. Be aware of memory layout to avoid wasted memory. And you need to know the difference between addressing a whole word and a specific bit. You will address your variables uh, in practical projects. In short, Codices organizes memory in words, usually 16 bits. And understanding this helps in efficient programming and memory management. Let's move on to the definition of a variable. In the simplest terms, variable is a place in a PLC memory where data is stored and processed by the program. A variable has such attributes as type. It can be Boolean type or integer data type. It has a, a name given by uh, the developer, by you. For example, X lamp this is a boolean variable or i temperature this is an integer data type variable what's more it has the address in the plc's memory the variable can change the value during program execution another element that stores data in plc memory are fixed constants just like variables have a data type like integer or floating point data type and such a constant has a symbolic name you probably remember the number pi which has a constant value of 3.14 in the same way you can declare your own constant values globally in the plc memory and use them in your project you need to remember that the constant does not change the value during program execution. All right, 
you now have basic information about memory units, variables and constants in codices. Let's move on to the next video. Let's declare a boolean variable in codices. First create a codices project and go to plc prg. Let's go to the first line and type here the variable name in Hungarian notation. First you need to find a prefix for boolean variable which is x. Next type the base name of our variable. I will name this variable var. Remember that the first letter of the base name should be uppercase. The rest of the base name should be lowercase. Then I will use assignment operator which is available in structure text language and I will write constant value which is true. Every single line of structure text program should be ended with semicolon. Great. What's more we can add a short comment writing true value to boolean variable. Just hit enter on the keyboard and you should see auto declare window. So what we have here? Here we will type uh, the name of the variable with prefix in Hungarian notation. Next you can choose from the list data type of a variable. We have also a scope field. You can declare this variable as local variable, input, output, global and many more. So we will use local variable. Next you have an object window. We'll declare that in PLC PRG main program and you have here initialization option. If you go to three dots you can add here init value and init value for this variable is false. What's more you can specify the address of PLC memory where the variable is uh, declared but we will not do that uh, right now because we work in PLC simulator. When you will configure physical hardware with inputs and outputs then you will specify addresses for variables. What's more you can check those flags. You can create a constant value if you want to and use retain and persistence. I will not explain those options yet because we will use it later in bigger projects. In the end you can specify here a comment for the variable declaration of bool type variable. You can click OK and your variable is declared here. Alright, that's all for this video. You have declared a boolean type variable. Now you know how to use auto declare option in ST editor. You can also download a ready made project down below the video. Let's go to the next material. Let's move on to the description of integer data type. In the table we can notice that there are types of integers with different length. 8, 16, 32 bits and we have different ranges. You can find here signed integer data type and unsigned integer data type. Let's check how the interpretation of an integer number in bit form looks like. Let's take any number, for example 3785 and let's assume that it is an integer number. The number is written on 16 bits where the value of the number is written on 15 bits looking from the right side and the sign of the number is written on the 16th bit. Each bit represents a number of power 2. The first bit on the right takes the value 2 to the 0 power. The second bit takes the number 2 to the 1st power and so on. In this example the sum of all positions for each bit position is 3785. 
the 15th bit is 0, which means it is a positive value. You have learned about the structure of an integer value, but let's see how its other variations look like. We distinguish integers with a sign, and these are such data type as signed integer, short integer, and double integer. We have also integers without a sign, like unsigned short integer, unsigned integer, and unsigned double integer. If you want to find more information about integer data types, just go to Codus's help. Go to reference programming, data types, and click on integer data types. Here we have a table with the name of the data type, like byte, signed integer, integer, then you have a column with its lower limit, upper limit, and the size of memory. For example, you have signed integer with a sign. So the lower limit of this data type is minus 128. And the upper limit of this data type is 127. It occupies 8 bit of PLC memory. Let's look on different example, unsigned integer. So we don't have a sign here and you can't write a negative value to this data type. The lower limit of this data type is zero and the upper limit is 255. All right, that's all. Let's go to the next video. Let's open a codices project and let's declare some integer variables. You can download a template project down below the video. In this template, you will find examples for integers ranges. You have here integer, double integer, long integer and unsigned short integer. Okay, let's go to eight line and let's type the variable name. Let's find in the table uh, the prefix for integer variable. We will use I prefix from the table and I will just create a variable called var. Here you can find the difference between boolean variable and integer variable. The base name is the same, prefixes are different. Okay, so let's add here assignment operator. So I will write a value to this variable. And let's say we will write 5000 to this variable. Add semicolon in the end of the line and hit enter on the keyboard to declare the variable. Here we have a name of the variable and the type. Click OK and variable is declared here. This is type integer. So here in the comment, I just left you a range for this type of variable. So you have a lower limit and upper limit. Now let's go to online tab. Make sure that you checked simulation and click login to download a project to PLC simulator. Okay, and start the program. And you can see that we have written a value to integer variable. But what will happen if we exceed the range of integer data type, the range of the variable? Let's check it out. So go to online and click logout. Let's say we will write the value bigger than the upper limit. So let's say we will write here this value or we, we can do it in different ways. So just get um, an upper value and just add here value of one. Then let's go to online tab and click login once again. And here you have different options. You can download a clean copy of your program. You will need to start the program once again or you can download only changes to PLC uh, simulator. So we will use the first option, login with online change and click OK. Look at that. We have a compile error. So we don't want to download uh, the program with errors to PLC simulator. We can go here to compiler window and go to error tab. And here you have an error cannot convert type double integer to
to type integer because here we exceeded the upper range of the integer data type. That's why we can't compile this program. You can modify this program by changing the type of the variable. So instead of integer data type, we will add here double integer data type. Look at the range of this type, it's wider and upper limit is bigger. But if you changed from integer to double integer, you need to also change the prefix of the variable. So the prefix for double integer is di. We need to do the same here in the body of the program. Okay, let's test the program. Let's go to online, go to login and choose login with online change. Click OK. Now our program is working. We can easily write this value to the variable. Go to online, click logout, and we'll declare one more variable for unsigned short integer type. But we will do that in a different way. Go to declaration window, hit enter, add prefix for this variable, usi, var, type unsigned short integer. Okay, let's go to the line number nine. And now we can go to edit option and choose input assistant. Now you can choose your variables from this field. Just find variable unsigned short integer var and click OK. Now you can write the value to this variable. Let's look at the range of this variable. We can't write here minus value. Let's try it. Just type minus 10 semicolon. Look at that. The variable is underlined in blue. That means there's a warning. If you go to the compiler window and go to warnings tab, you will see a warning. Implicit conversion from signed type sint to unsigned type async. Possible change of sign. That means that you pass a sint data type, a value of sint data type, which is minus 10, and it is accepted by the compiler. But this is implicit conversion. Let's check it out. Let's go to online, login, login with online change. And we have that value written to the variable. If you look to the upper limit of async data type, 255 minus 10, the calculation takes into account the value of zero. Therefore, the value is 246 and not 245. When operating on integer data types, it is worth remembering about cases of exceeding the range. If you declare a variable, make sure that its range will correspond to the values that will be entered in your program. You might wonder why declare variables with a small range. It's done to avoid unnecessarily using memory. Look at the table. Sint takes up 8 bits, while integer takes up 16 bits. The memory of the programmable logic controller is limited. If you optimize your memory usage well, your programs will process faster, which is often crucial in automation applications. You will learn more about integer type variables when working on projects. That's all for this lesson. Let's move on to the next video. Now we'll work with notation in number system. Firstly, let's declare a variable called by byte which means that we would like to declare byte type variable. And let's write here a constant value. 
To do that, let's go to calculator on Windows system. And here you can switch the view to programmer. You can find here different numeric systems. The simple one is decimal. For example, we can write here 50 value and look at that the calculator automatically converts decimal value to another numeric values like binary value. Let's copy the binary value and go to codices and let's type here number two hash. That means that we would like to write a binary value to our variable. Let's paste our value from the calculator. We can save that by pressing Ctrl plus S on the keyboard. Hit enter on the keyboard and you can declare the variable by. Byte with a correct type. From the drop down list, just choose byte type and click OK. Now your variable is correctly declared. Let's go to online tab, check simulation option and log into PLC simulator. Let's start our system. Success. You have written the value of 50 to variable and the value is displayed in decimal notation. If you go to calculator in decimal notation, it's value 50. If you want to write this value in binary system, you need to write this constant to the variable. What's more, you can go here, right mouse click, and you can go, go to display mode and you can change the view from decimal to binary. And right now you can display values in binary system. It's really helpful in projects when we deal with different numeric constants. In PLC programming, we have several digital systems at our disposal. The first one is a binary system. How to write a value in this system? Enter number two, then hash sign, and then the value in the form of a sequence of zeros and ones. In the octal system, we enter the value eight, then sign hash and a value. The most popular system is decimal system that is used on everyday basis, not only in programming. We also have a hexadecimal system. To enter a value, you enter 16 number, then sign hash and the value. Let's move to the codices help, go to operands and numeric constants. Here we have a short description and examples for numeric constants in different notation. Numeric values can be binary, octal, decimal and hexadecimal numbers. You enter the hexadecimal digit values for the numbers 10 to 15 as usual with the letters A to F. And here you have examples. You have example for decimal number, binary, octal, hexadecimal and so on. Let's go back to codices, go to online and click logout. And we declare one more variable, which is word. Let's add a prefix for this variable, which is w word. And let's go to calculator. And this time we will write an octal value to variable, which is 62. So we need to add here eight number, hash sign and type 62. Hit enter and let's declare type word and click OK. Let's test our program, go to online login and login with online change. Let's change the displayed value to decimal once again. And look at that, we have two different notation. Here we have binary, which is 50 in decimal. And we have octal notation, which is also 50 in decimal. Okay, that's all you can play on your own with numeric constants. We only touched on the basics of writing numbers in various notations. You will learn more by implementing larger automation projects. Let's test floating point data types. Real data type has a dead range and occupies 32 bits. 
and long real uh, data type has wider range and occupies 64 bits. Let's go to Codesys Online Help, go to data types and click on data type real and long real. Here you have smallest value number for each data type and largest value number. You have storage space here and some examples. Let's go back to codices and let's declare variable r result and let's write a value one dot three four five six seven eight. Let's declare the variable. It will be real variable type. Let's go to online and log into simulator. And let's start PLC. We have written a floating point number to real variable. And look at that. We have approximation value of the displayed number. If you leave the mouse cursor on uh, this value, you can display the whole value. Now you know how to declare and write values to floating point variables. These types of variables are often used to store physical values such as temperature, pressure or flow. You will often encounter floating point numbers in your automation projects. Let's move on to the next video. I would like to say a few words about arrays in codices. An array is a collection of data elements of the same data type. Let's declare a sample array. If you want to declare an array, you need to use prefix. You can use prefix arr or simply just add a. Next, the base variable name. It can be array, data type array. And here we need to type a dimension. We can start from zero index to 10 index. Next, the keyword off and add the data type of your array. It can be integer. Very nice. You can also initialize your array with values. Go to edit and click on auto declare option. You have auto declare view. You can type here the name of your array. Here we have dimension and type of the array. And here you have a field initialization. Just click on three dots and look at that. You have all elements of your array. It has indexes from zero to 10. This array has 11 elements. You can add here init value. Let's add some values here. And click OK. Now we'll declare an integer variable. And we can write here the first element of the array. How to do that? Just type the name. And here type, for example, index number three. Declare the variable and go to online check simulation option, login, click yes. Look at that. We have an array with 11 elements. Each element has an index numbered from zero to 10 and init value. What init value means? When we start the PLC, all values are written in proper index. So let's start the PLC. You have just written the value from index, third index of, a, of an array to the variable. Go to online, log out, and we can um, do a simple mathematical calculation. So uh, add here a value from the array of index four. Go to online, login, login with online change. As you can see, you can easily get the value from your array with proper index. So in this case, I just added 
two values from the array of third index and fourth index. The sum of those values is written to the variable. Let's sum up our short lesson about arrays. An array is a structure consisting of variables of the same type. It can be used, for example, for mathematical operations, saving recipes, saving measurements, tracking materials on the production line, and many more. If you declare an array, you need to use a prefix. It can be ARR or simple A. How to declare an array in codices? Here you have an example. You can declare an array of bool, for example, for digital outputs. But this is not the end of example applications of arrays in your program. In more sophisticated projects, you will use arrays to control the program, for example, devices. Let's say we have pumps in our project. And instead of declaring each pump separately, you can declare the array of pumps. Thanks to that, you avoid declaring the same code in the program. You don't need to copy that. If you want to find out more about arrays, just go to Codices Online Help to Data Types and click on Data Type Array. Here you can find a lot of examples of using arrays in Codices programs. Okay, that's all for this short lesson. Let's go to the next video. In addition to default data types, you can also define your own data types in the Codices project. How to do that? Go to Project Tree, right mouse click on Application, go to Add Object, and choose DUT, which is abbreviation of Data Unit Type. Most often, we use Structure and enumeration. Firstly, we declare your own structure. Type here capital ST underscore and the name of the structure, it could be motor. Next, click on add. Structure is a new data type in your project, which consists of various variables with different types. Let's declare some variables inside the structure. Here, we define the name of the structure. Between struct and unstruct, we define variables like r speed. It will be real variable, and I will declare some variables here. All right, you have declared a new data type in your project, which is structure. This structure is now visible in the project tree. Let's go to plcprg. Let's declare a new variable with the name st motor underscore one. Hit F2 on the keyboard and you go to input assistant. Here you have default data types like bool, byte, real, etc. But you have also your own data types, structure types. Go to application and choose ST motor and click OK. Let's declare one more variable. Let's type here ST motor underscore two and you can use shortcut control plus space and here you have drop down list with the name of your structure. Now let's go to the body of the program and let's call the first structure stmotor dot and here you have access to all variables inside our local structure. Let's say we will choose our speed variable from this structure and let's write the value 300 dot six. Now let's use another structure for motor two and let's choose the same variable R speed, write different value, for example, 500 dot three. Go to online, check the simulation and log into simulator. Let's start the PLC. We have 
two variables which are structured variables and we base on our variable declared in the project stmotor. We can declare more variables based on this structure. Such a feature is very useful when we build big projects. Let's sum up our short lesson about structures. Structure consists of data of various types and it is declared at the level of a given program organization unit. It can be program or function block and you can also declare structure in global variables. If you declare structure, it is specified for the entire codices project. If you do any changes in structure, it will be made to all data of this type within the user program. And the prefix for the structure is st. Let's go back to Codices project and let's look at the difference between the structure and the local variable. The main structure consists of st prefix. We use here capital letters, then underscore and uh, the base name of the structure. But if you declare the variable, you use lowercase letters and it can be st prefix. Okay, that's all for structures. We'll use them in our projects. Let's declare another user defined data type, which is enumeration. Go to project tree, right mouse click on application, go to add object and choose DUT. Here, choose enumeration option and type the name for your enumeration. We can add a prefix capital E underscore and let's uh, add the name for that traffic lights and click on add. Here we have keywords type and end type, the name of enumeration, two parentheses and a constant inside the enumeration. Okay, so let's define the first light for our traffic lights, yellow. Here you need to add comma. Let's define another color for traffic lights. It will be green and add a value for that. If we add value for enumeration. In the end of mm, declaration of the value, we need to add comma. Next, it will be red light. And we will assign a, a value to the red light, which is number two. Okay, you have declared an enumeration in your project. You can see that in um, the project tree. The same as a structure, you can use that to define a local variable in PLC PRG or different program organization unit. So let's do that. Let's declare traffic lights variable with a prefix E, kit F2 on the keyboard and let's choose your enumeration. Let's declare one more variable, I color type integer. Let's go to the body of the program, call the variable I color control space shortcut and let's write the enumeration to i color variable okay let's go to online login start plc and we have one really nice feature here because we can use uh, the enumeration components like constants the yellow is constant and it is recognized as zero value Double left mouse click on enumeration and you can prepare a new value from drop down list. Choose green, click OK. Use shortcut on the keyboard, Ctrl plus F7. You have written a value. The green constants from our enumeration has a value of one. Okay, once again, let's choose the red value, click OK. Control F7, the red constant has a value of two. This is next useful feature to use in your projects. To sum up our lesson, enumeration as a user defined data type consisting of a series of comma separated components, enumerated values. Enumerated values can be used globally throughout the project and treated as constants. We use prefixes in our codices project but if you go to the documentation of codices, there is no specific prefix, you can name enumeration freely.
but some programmers use prefixes for enumeration. I use prefixes for enumerations, depends on the projects. That's all for this short lesson, let's go to the next video. Variables in the project are divided into local and global variables. You can divide the PLC project into program organization units, which will make it easier to you to manage the project. These are programs, function blocks and functions. Local variables, as the name suggests, can be used locally only in a given program organization unit, for example, in a function block or a function. However, you can refer to a global variable anywhere in the program. Let's test local and global variables in our project. Go to project tree. We have PLC PRG and this is a program organization unit in codices. Go to application, right mouse click, go to add object and choose POU, which is program organization unit. You can create a new unit. It can be program, function block or function. We will use program. Let's name that test underscore PRG and let's choose structured text language for this program. Click on add. In the project tree, you have two programs right now. Inside each program, you can define local variables here. The same in the test program. So let's declare the first local variable for test program. Let's say it will be I var type integer. Okay, so let's go to application, right mouse click, add object, and let's define global variable list. We can add name for this list. Let's say we will leave that name gvl, which is global variable list, and click on add. Here you can declare global variables and you can access global variables everywhere in the project. Let's declare the first variable i var type integer and x lamp type bool. Okay, let's go to test prg. Let's call here local variable i var and go to edit choose input assistant or you can use keyboard shortcut F2 and go to GVL and let's choose IVAR. Look at that. We have local variable with a name IVAR and global variable with the same name, but we don't have any warnings and errors. Because if you call global variable, you need to add a name of global variable list. The compiler knows that you use global variable. Thanks to that, you can create the same names for global and local variables. What's more, if you go to plcprg, you can also use here global variable. You can access global variable everywhere in the project. If you type the name of global variable list, next dot, you can access to all global variables. Let's call xlamp and you can write there a value, let's say true value. When to use global variables and when to use local ones? I have a simple tip for you. Use local variables as much as possible in your project because your program will be more readable to others. Using global variables may make your program not readable to other programmers. Sometimes global variables are used for communication or to declare certain parameters. All right, that's all for global and local variables. Let's go to the next video. Welcome to your homework assignment. You will work with variables. Firstly, you need to declare variables with specific types. I declare idate variable, wdate, UI year, S day, and R temperature. So declare those types variables in your program. 
Next, you will need to write some values to variables. Just take today's date. Today I have 13th of September and it's Wednesday. Look at your date and just write it down in your program because you will use this date to write values to variables. To integer variable I date, just write the value of the day and the month. I have this value and write it in decimal notation. Go to programmer calculator and convert your value to different numeric notation. Because to the next variable w date, you need to write the value of your date in binary notation. You need to just copy that and paste in the program. To the next variable UI year, just write a value in octal notation. You have written a date to variables. Next, you will work with string variable. Just declare the variable as day. It is a string variable and write to this variable a string value. This is the name of a day. And the last variable is a variable with floating point number. Just check actual temperature outside or inside your home and write your value to the floating point variable. In my case, I have this value 24.6 Celsius degrees. Let's go to the next task you need to declare a raid with three elements. You need to write today's date to the next rows of the table. To the first element, just write the value of a day, to the next, the value of the month, and to the last element, the value of a year. You need to create a simple mathematical calculation using arrays. Just declare a variable called iResult, create a mathematical calculation, just add the value of the first row to the value of the third row of the array. Subtract the value of the second row. I would like to show you my solution. Firstly, you need to create an empty codices project and create program from scratch. Today is 13th of September 2023. You need to use your date in your project. I created some variables and I have written values to those variables. What's more, in task number two, I initialized uh, an array of three elements with values. The day 13, month, it is September, so I added here nine, and this is a year. Then I created simple mathematical calculation here. Let's go to online and login. My program works fine and I have correct solution for mathematical calculation on array. What you need to do is to share your solution on our Discord channel. Do a screenshot of your project. Go to our Discord channel. Go to Codasys ST course. Go to homework and paste your solution. Type here variables homework. Upload the screenshot and wait for my response for your homework assignment. I'm waiting for your solution and see you later in the next video. Operators, this is a key element you need to master to create efficient programs in Codesys. Operators allow you to perform arithmetic, logical operations and value comparisons. You can program automation devices in graphical and text languages. I would like to show you the use of the assignment operator in ST language based on the difference between the graphical ladder language. A ladder program looks like an electrical diagram. How does it work in practice? Let's assume that you want to write a simple program that will turn on a lamp if you press a button with a normally open contact. Here in Codices, you have two programs. You have Ladder PRG and PLC PRG. The first one, Ladder PRG, 
will be written in a ladder language. So you have here toolbox and you have ladder elements. Firstly, you need to add a network here. In the ladder language, a program is divided into so-called networks. In ST language, we have line of program. Let's go back to the first network. Let's go to ladder elements and let's add a normally open contact. And let's add a coil for output. In your template, I have declared some variables. Here we will add X button variable. And on the output, we'll add X lamp start. The program is executed by the controller from left to right. The value from the button on the left is written to the output on the right. How can you write the same program in structure text? Let's see. Let's go to PLC PRG to the first line of code. And firstly, let's call a variable called X lamp start space. Let's add here assignment operator. Let's write the value from the button to the lamp. As you can see in the case of ST language, value assignment is done in the opposite way than in the ladder language. On the left side, we enter the variable into which we want to enter the result of the operation. Then we will add the assignment operator and enter the appropriate value on the right. Okay, let's add uh, another network, right mouse click in the ladder program, insert network below. From the toolbox, you can insert normally closed contact, negate here variable called X lamp start. So this uh, variable, let's add a coil and let's call here a variable called X lamp stop. This network is pretty the same to the first network, but here we have a negation. Let's do the same in the ST language. Let's call X lamp stop, add assignment operator. And here we need to negate a variable X lamp start. So we need to add a negation operator, which is not and add a variable X lamp start. As you can see, we have same situation, but here we have a negation on the left side, a negated variable, and we assign it to the variable on the right. In ST language, we have a variable, then assignment operator, and the result of our operation. Here we have a negation for the variable X lamp start. Okay, so the last example for this lesson, let's add um, another network. Let's go to ladder elements and let's call move operation. Here we, we can type true to call this instruction. And here we can add a mathematical operation like 10 plus 20, hit enter. And we are assigned here on the output a variable i var. Let's go to the st language. Let's call i var variable assignment operator. Let's do the same mathematical operation. If you want to assign an operation to the variable in ladder language, we need to use move instruction. If you want to do that in st language, you need to use assignment operator and you will write a result of this operation to the variable on the left. Okay, we can go to online and check our program. Remember about simulation, go to online login. Let's start the program. Our program works. Here we have simple ladder operation. Our lamp is ready, is on. Next in the third network, we have move instruction and we have result written on the right. The same in ST program, we use assignment operator and we have the same result in this program.
Let's see what we can find about assignment operator in Codesys Online Help. If you go to reference programming, programming languages, structure text, and if you go to assignments, you can find a definition of assignment operator. This assignment operator executes the same function as the move operator. We have tested it yet, but if you go here, you can find some examples for uh, the assignment operator. That's all for uh, assignment operator. Let's go to the next video. In automation programming, we use arithmetic operators to perform the necessary calculations. The basic arithmetic operators are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. When performing calculations using operators, you must be aware of how to use variable types and how to perform type conversion. Let's open a new codices project and let's create a calculation using arithmetic operators. Firstly, declare variable i var and assign a result of calculation 10 plus 25. Hit enter, you can declare a variable integer variable okay let's go to online check simulation online login let's start the plc you can use a shortcut on the keyboard f5 and we have result of our calculation we have used an addition arithmetic operator if you want to log out from um, plc simulator you can use a shortcut control plus f8 Okay, let's create a new calculation. We will use subtraction arithmetic op operator. If you want to log in to simulator, just use shortcut Alt plus F8. Login with online change. And here we have result of subtraction. It is 17. But look at that. We use the same variable for addition operator and subtraction operator. You must know that the last operation in ST code is our result. If you use the same variable here and here, the result of the operation is in the last line of code. Okay, let's log out from the simulator and let's declare our result variable. It will be real variable and we will use division arithmetic operator 5 divided to 3 and firstly let's go to windows calculator let's check the result 5 divided to 3 we have that number and we should have a result written to uh, our variable let's check it out firstly declare the variable but our compiler want to declare a variable not floating point variable, but Einstein integer variable. Why? So let's do that. UI result. Let's log in and look at that. We have here integer value written to the variable. This is the result of our division. So if we have two integer constants, to integer values and we would like to use division operator the result of a division is an integer value so we should have the result 1.666 in this case we don't have that value after a comma we have only integer value written to the variable let's create another line of program our result 5 divide to 3.0 hit enter the compiler wants to declare the variable our result it is floating point type it is real type in this case we will write floating point number to our result variable because we use a division arithmetic operator and floating point number here Let's check it out. Let's log in to simulator. We have here a floating point result that works. You need to remember about that, about types of variables and how to use 
arithmetic operators properly. Okay, let's do next example. I result to multiple by 10. Let's declare integer variable and let's log into the simulator. That works fine. We are not surprised the result is 20. So right now we will go to input assistant. You can go here to keywords. You can use arithmetic operators from here. You have more arithmetic operators like here. We will use XPT operator, which is power. If you don't know how to use that, you can use Codices Online Help. Just go with the mouse co cursor here and hit F1 button on the keyboard. You will automatically go to Codices Online Help. Here we have operator XPT. And you have example how to use, use that in ST language or FBD. And here we have example program. We need to declare base and exponent. Let's type here two and here three. Let's declare the variable LR result. It will be long real result type, click OK. Log into simulator. How does it work? Two, power three, it's of course eight. And that value is written to our variable. All right, that's all about arithmetic operators in codices. Let's go to the next video. Logical operators are operations on zero and one values. In this case, we apply Boolean algebra. In PLC, the equivalents for zeros and ones are the values true and false. These values can represent elements connected to the digital inputs and outputs of the PLC. It can be two state button, switch, binary sensors, lamps, etc. In ST language, you can use basic logical operators like AND, OR, XOR and NOT. Let's go to Codices project. You can download the template and start working with me. Firstly, let's call the first variable called xlamp1. Firstly, let's call xbutton1 and xbutton2. And logical operator takes two arguments. First argument is xbutton1 and we monitor the state of this variable and the second argument is x button 2. If you go to content help me codices.com you can find more about uh, logical operators. Here I have operator and you can find here a short description how to use and logical operator. Permitted data types are bool, byte, word, double word and l word. You can use two values, true and false, if you use bool variables. You can also create bitwise operations, like here in the example. You can write a value in a binary notation and use an operator to create a bitwise operation. Go back to codices, log into simulator, let's start the PLC. Let's change the value of button 1 to true and our lamp is still off. Let's turn on next button and our lamp is on. And works fine if you turn on two arguments on inputs of our AND logic gate, we have the result of this operation and the result is true. I prepared for you the draft table for AND logical operator for bit logic operations with two arguments. You can look at the table. If you have false value at two inputs, you have also false value at the output of our logical gate. If you have two true value on inputs, you have also true value at output. 
Let's log out from simulator. Let's call xlamp2. Let's copy this line. And we can change operator to OR. Let's log in changes to the simulator. If we have two true values on each argument, our lamp is on. Let's turn off the first button. The first lamp is off because we have AND. And if we have OR operator, we need only one argument on to turn the lamp on. If you turn off two buttons, our lamp is off. You can see the behavior of our OR logic gate in the draft table. We have two arguments. Only in the case when two arguments are, are turned off, we have false var value here. Our output is turned off as well. Let's log out from the simulator. Let's call xlamp3. And we'll use not operator for x button 1. Let's log in changes to the simulator. The value of the x button 1 is negated by the operator not. And we have written the opposite value of button 1 to the lamp 3. When the x button is turned off, the lamp is turned on. Let's turn on the button 1. The situation is opposite. When the button is turned on, the lamp is turned off. You can see that in the draft table of not operator, when the argument is false, the output is true. When the input argument is true, the output is turned off. Okay, let's test the last basic logic gate for lamp 4. Let's copy that line. Instead OR, we will use XOR, exclusive OR logic gate. Let's analyze the table of this gate. When two inputs arguments are false, the Q output is false. When inputs arguments has value true, the output is set to false. Let's check it out. Let's log in changes to the simulator. Let's turn off two buttons and the lamp is false. When we set on button one and button two, our lamp is set to false. Our logic XOR gate works in according to that draft table. Okay. What's more, you can combine logic gates. You can, for example, negate here or here. Thanks to that, you can create more sophisticated logical conditions. All right, that's all for logical operators. Let's go to the next video. You will often use comparison operators in your programs. They are used to compare two operands returning a bool value. The return value is false if the comparison expression is not met and the value true if the condition is met. We can distinguish the following operators. Greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal, equal and not equal. Here we have an example. We have two integer value compared. If the condition is met, the bool value through all force is re returned and written to x result variable. It is possible to compare values of different types. For example, integer values, real, strings, arrays or even structures. Let's test each comparison operator in Codes. You can download a ready uh, project to test down below the video. I have declared some variables. I have lamps for each comparator. Let's log into PLC simulator. Let's start the PLC. Firstly, we have greater than or equal comparator. We have two values zero in our variables. So zero equal zero the expression returns a value of true, the lamp is switched on. Let's write to uh, i var to variable, the value of 10, let's write the value, 0 is not greater than value of 10, the expression returns the false value and the lamp is switched off. 
let's go to less than or equal comparator. The value of zero is less than 10. The lamp number two is switched on. When we write the first variable 10 value, the lamp is switched on because 10 equals number 10. Let's write here value 11 and the lamp is switched on because 11 is not less than value of 10. Next comparator is less than. 11 is not less than 10. The lamp number three is switched off. Let's type here five. The five is less than 10. So the lamp is switched on. Next comparator is greater than. Five is not greater than 10. The lamp number four is switched off. Let's type here 20. The lamp number four is switched on. When I type here number 10, the lamp is switched off because 10 is not greater than number 10. Here we have equal comparator. Number 10 is equal number 10. So the lamp number five is switched on. We can change the value. Now the lamp is switched off and the last comparator not equal. Five is not equal number 10. The lamp number six is turned on. If we type here same values to the variables, in this case, the lamp is switched off. All right, that's all for uh, comparison operators. I hope that you know how to use it in your project. Let's go to the next video. Let's talk about evaluation of expressions. Expressions are composed of operators and operands. An operand can be constant, a variable, a function call, or a farther expression. If you create expression, you need to take care about evaluation of expressions. The evaluation of an expression takes place by processing the operators according to certain rules of binding. Codices processes the operator with the strongest binding first. Operators with the same binding strength are processed from the left to right. You have a lot of expressions like uh, mathematical uh, operations, logical operators, comparison operators and many more. You need to pay attention to binding strength of an expression. Let's look at a simple example for evaluation of expressions. Let's look at the table. The strongest binding for our expression is for parentheses. This expression will evaluate first. Next, we have XPT. Next, we have negation, according to our table. Then addition, next comparison operators, here and here. In the end, we have AND logical operator and whole expression with or logic gate. If you create such a sophisticated expression, pay attention to binding strength of your operation. All right, that's all for evaluation of expressions. You will use it in your future projects. Welcome to your operator's homework assignment. You will need to use your knowledge of operators to write a simple ventilator control program. You will have several buttons and a temperature controller at your disposal. Below the video, you will find a project template with declared variables and a visualization template. What we have here. Here I have PLCPRG. As you can see, I have declared some variables here. I have a ventilator variable, which is connected to the lamp ventilator status. Next, I have button start connected to start button, button stop connected to stop button and X sensor motion connected to the simulator of the sensor. Next, I have two variables for temperature. I have simulator for measure actual temperature and I have init value for that 24.5 Celsius degrees. It is real type variable. What's more, I have a variable for setting temperature. You will need to use those variables 
to set a proper condition. I would like to show you how that program works. We have actual temperature 24.5 and we would like to set a temperature. If set temperature is bigger than actual temperature, ventilator is switched off. When the set temperature is below actual temperature, ventilator is switched on. You can also change actual temperature, simulate that by using the slider. You have also three buttons to simulate your application. You can stop the ventilator even if temperature condition is met. Pressing the stop button stops the ventilator immediately. You can also start ventilator manually by pressing start button. Or if you simulate a sensor. Of course, pressing the stop button stops the ventilator immediately. Here I have a ready-made program, but I will not show you a solution yet. You need to use here your knowledge about logic gates, comparison operators, negation and expression evaluation. Remember about parentheses in your expression and let's start with your solution. If you write your program, just create a screenshot of your program Go to our Discord channel, go to Codesys ST course, the homework section, upload a screenshot and write operators homework. All right, I'm waiting for your solution on Discord channel and see you later in the next video. You are doing great. You have mastered the basics. In the next part of the video, We'll cover essential control flow instructions in CODESYS, if, else, case, and the for loop. These tools will help you to manage the flow of your program and efficiently repeat actions, allowing you to build more dynamic and effective automation applications. Let's dive into it, like the video, and see you. Now it's time to learn how to control the program flow using conditions and loops. Type here if keyword, let's declare a variable x button one. We will create here a logical operation. Let's add here AND gate and next variable x sensor. Type keyword then, hit enter, declare variables x button one, bool, x sensor. We have if condition, we have keyword if, here we have a condition. When a logical condition is met, then the code inside the if sta statement is executed. Inside if condition, let's add a line of code. I counter assignment operator. I counter plus one. This is a simple incrementation. You can hit enter and declare the variable integer type. Okay, we can test our program, go to online, check simulation, go online login. Let's start the PLC. Okay, the code inside if statement is not executed yet because the condition is not met. Let's change the value of the button one to true. Condition is not met because we need to add two true values on and inputs. So let's change the value of sensor to true. The condition is met and the code inside if statement is executed. Look at that, we have here an incrementation. This is time to learn about PLC cycle because our incrementation works because PLC works in cycle, our program works in cycle. Let's explain that. The PLC operates based on a specific sequence of operations known as the PLC cycle or scan cycle. This cycle is crucial for understanding 
how the PLC processes information and controls outputs based on the inputs it receives. The PLC cycle consists of the following steps. First, input scan. The PLC reads the status of its input devices, sensor switches and updates the corresponding input data table in its memory. Second, program execution. After reading the inputs, the PLC executes its control program, which is stored in its memory. This program contains a series of instructions that dictate how the PLC should respond to a specific input conditions. As the program runs, it processes the input data and determines the desired state of the output devices. And lastly, output scan. Based on the decisions made during the program execution phase, the PLC updates the status of its output devices. This step allows the PLC to actuate or control the connected machinery or processes. Remember that the entire process is a just a single cycle of the PLC. The PLC program is executed very quickly at specified time intervals. In Codesys, you can call your programs in a cycle and define how often it should be invoked. This time is usually given in milliseconds. Let's go back to our program uh, and look at that. Our value in iCounter variable is incrementing very quickly. Let's log out from the simulator and let's go to task configuration, click on main task. Here we have PLC task configuration. We have cyclic type, so we call our program in a cycle. And here we have interval, 20 milliseconds, it's very quick. Let's change that for 2000 milliseconds, it's two seconds. Go back to PLC, PRG, let's go to online, Login once again. Let's start the PLC. Let's fulfill our condition in if statement. You might notice a difference. The value in the variable is incremented slower than before. The program is called every two seconds. This means that every two seconds the value of 1 will be added to the iCounter variable. I hope you now understand how the if condition and the PLC program cycle work. This knowledge is essential for implementing practical projects. I invite you to the next video. Let's take previous code with if statement and let's add here next condition. Type here keyword else if declare variable x button to or x button three then let's declare two variables next you can copy second line here instead of addition add here subtraction i counter minus one great finally let's add keyword else call variable i counter and write zero value. We have created if, else if and else statement. How does the presented condition construction work? Initially, the if condition is checked. If the condition is met, the first instruction is executed along with all the code within the if condition. If the condition is not met, instruction number one is not executed and the condition at else if is checked. If this condition is met, instruction number two is executed. If neither the if nor else if conditions are met, instruction number two under the else condition is automatically executed. I would like to show you a special tool thanks to which you will learn exactly how the individual parts of the if condition work. It is called a debugger, which is used to check the correctness of the code and catch programming errors. Go to program, go to online and log into simulator. Next, start the PLC. 
On the left side, each line of code has a number. Each line of code also has a small gray dot. Here you can create a new breakpoint for debugger. Right mouse click on the first line on the gray dot. Choose toggle breakpoint. If you toggled a breakpoint, the PLC automatically went to the stop mode. Here we have an information. The PLC is halted on breakpoint. So the PLC cycle is halted in the first line of code. Thanks to debugger, we can examine our code during the period of one single cycle of the PLC. Okay, our cycle is in the first line and the if condition is checked. It's not fulfilled because we have here false value for button and sensor. If you go here and we, you will choose step over, you will go to the next line of our code. So in the single cycle of the PLC, else if condition will be checked. You can unfold the whole condition. We are still in the single cycle of the PLC. This condition is also not met. The fourth line will not be executed. Let's check it out. Let's click on step over. And we automatically went to else statement. This statement is fulfilled. In the single cycle of the PLC, the value of zero will be written to iCounter variable. Let's click on step over. We'll go to the seventh line, to the end of our if condition. And next, we will go to the first line, to the next cycle of the PLC. Right now, I will change the value of the first condition, if condition. Now, the condition is fulfilled. Let's click on step over. The condition is met. And we go to the second line. Let's click on step over. If the if condition is met, else and else if is not checked, we go to the end of our condition. The value in I counter variable is incremented and we'll go to the next cycle. The condition is checked once again. The condition is met. If you click once again on step over, the value in I counter variable is incremented once again in the next cycle of the PLC. Okay, let's check the next condition. Step over. Now the if statement is not met. So else if is checked. Let's change um, the state of variable x button to. Now condition is met. We'll go to the fourth line of code. Let's click on step over once again. And the value is decremented right now. Let's do it once again. Condition is met and the value in the counter is incremented to zero. That's great, everything works. Debugger is really useful tool for debugging your code. Now you know how the PLC cycle work and how to use if, else if and else conditions to create your program. Let's go to the next video. Let's try case statement for control program flow. Firstly, use keyword case. Next, declare variable i var. Add keyword off, hit enter, declare the variable. It is integer variable. Let's add the first condition of our case statement. It will be zero, semicolon. Here we declare a variable x lamp one and we will write true value. Let's declare another variable x lamp two. Let's write false variable. Okay, let's add next condition one semicolon. We can set lamp two. So write true value and let's declare next variable x lamp three. Let's write false value to it. Okay. 
We can also declare a range for a condition. Let's add here 10, two dots, 20, semicolon. Let's switch off the first lamp. Set the third lamp and switch off second lamp. What's more, we can add else statement. We can switch off all lamps. Now let's write the program to the simulator. Let's start the PLC. We have zero value in IVAR variable. We use case statement. If we have zero value, value in our condition variable, we go to the first condition marked as zero. In this condition, the first lamp is switched on and the second lamp is switched off. If you write, for example, one value to condition variable in case statement, we will go to the second condition marked as one. In that condition, the second lamp is switched on, the third lamp is switched off. Let's write a value from this range, for example, 15 to our condition variable, and we go to that case. The third lamp is switched on, lamp one and lamp two is switched off. What's more, in our case condition, we have optional option else. If the value in the case condition is outside the ranges of any of the cases, then the else condition is executed. Let's type here 25. The else condition is met and is executed. In this condition, all lamps are switched off. Let's sum up our lesson about case statement. Processing scheme of a case instruction is following, you can see on the graph. When value in a var1 variable is equal for example, value one, then instruction one is executed. When the value in the var one is equal to value two, then instruction two is executed. If the same instruction is executed for several values of the variable, then you can write the values in sequence separated by commas. You can add a lot of conditions for case statement, and you can use default condition using else keyword. Case statement is very useful in every automation project. So make sure that you understand this case statement and let's go to the next video. I would like to show you a for loop. The for loop is used to execute instructions with a certain number of repetitions. Let's declare an example for loop. Type here, four keywords. Next, declare variable i counter, which is the counter of the loop. Let's assign a start value for uh, the counter of the loop. It will be zero. Type keyword two. Here you declare the end value of the loop. Type by keyword. Your loop will be incremented by one in this case. And finally, add do keyword. Hit enter. Declare i counter variable, which is integer variable automatically and for keyword is added to your program. Let's declare an array, a array, and let's add here i counter variable assigned to every row of array a value. It can be i var variable plus 10. Okay, hit enter, declare array, go here, choose array wizard, type zero to nine. This is dimension for our uh, array and integer type. Hit enter, click OK. Declare also I var variable. Before the for loop, let's write a value to I var variable. It can be one. Okay, let's go to online, check simulation, click login, click yes. We'll use the bugger to see how the for loop works. Go to first line, 
right mouse click, toggle breakpoint and start the PLC. The program is halted on the first line. You can use step over option for um, debugger. I use F10 button on the keyboard. It's uh, a shortcut. So let's go here, F10 on the keyboard. The program has written a one value to IVAR variable and we go to the for loop. Firstly, iCounter has a value of zero. I remind you that this is a counter of the loop. Let's hit F10 on the keyboard. We'll count to nine in the for loop. We go inside for loop. You can expand an array here. You can see that every row of the array has no value, it's zero. Okay, hit F10 on the keyboard. I counter variable is incremented by one. You need to know that the for loop works in a single cycle of the PLC. It will count, in this case, from zero to nine in a single cycle of the PLC. Let's proceed with the for loop. F10 on the keyboard, we go inside. 11 value is written to the first row of the array. Look at that. We are in the first row because we have a one value in I counter. We refer to the first row here of the array. Here we have a mathematical operation. 10 plus one is 11. Let's go to the next iteration of the loop. Now we have two value in our counter variable. And look at that. Every time the for loop is incremented, we write a value to the row of the array. Let's proceed with the for loop. I press F10 on the keyboard. Okay. When we reach nine value, we end the for loop and we go back to the first line to the next cycle of the PLC. Okay, let's go online, log out. We can modify the program. Let's add here I counter value plus 10. Click login. Yes. Login with online change. Let's start PLC. We are not in a debugger mode, but look at that. We have different values in every row of our array. Because we have different mathematical operation, we add IVAR variable, which is one. In every cycle of the loop, we add the value of the for loop counter. You can see that once again in a debugger mode, click on the first line, toggle breakpoint. What's more, you can go online and you can reset all values by pressing reset warm. Click OK. OK. All values are reset. The PLC is in the stop mode. Run it once again. We are in debugger mode right now. Let's use F10 button on the keyboard and we can proceed with the for loop. You can observe each row of the array, the I counter value with every cycle of the for loop is incrementing and we have the result written to each row of the array. Now we know how the for loop works in structured text. We use for loops for a lot of industrial processes. Make sure that you know how to use it because we will use it in your automation projects. See you later. Congratulations. You have completed the entire Codesys Basics tutorial. The next step is to start creating industrial automation projects on your own. I'd love to hear what projects you would like to work on in Codesys. If you want to start working on real automation projects, you will find them in our courses on the ControlByte platform. Among other things, you will find a course on programming in courses, structured text, where you will create a temperature controller for a control cabinet 
and a pumping station with free pumps. If you want to receive more content from us, sign up for our newsletter. We send out highly practical tips on the basics of industrial automation programming. Finally, remember to give us a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our automation and robotics content. See you in the next videos and remember about programming in this amazing tool, which is CodeSys.